My name is Jeannie Vance. I'm with Keller Williams Realty Maui, and I am all about building community. I think it's more important than ever right now. So I'm on a mission to lift up the people that make our South Maui community the wonderful place that it is to live, to work, and to visit. I'm excited to be visiting people that offer us products, services, restaurants, and as I get to know them better and better, it just makes life in South Maui more wonderful. I'm excited today to be sitting with Tina Weldberger. She's our State House Representative for South Maui. Welcome. Aloha, Jeannie. Thanks for having me today. Aloha. I'm so happy to have you here today. Really? I want to hear about the legislative session, but let's start at the beginning. Tell us about Tina. Well, I have been South Maui State House Rep for three years. I um, was elected first in 2018 and then re-elected in 2020, so we just finished our first, our third session, the first year of the two-year biennium. Uh, we have some successes to talk about and we have some challenges left unresolved. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we all know, it's the long ball game. So I do understand, I understand. Tell me a little bit about how you ended up on Maui and maybe a little bit about what made you decide to choose this, this line of work. So I came to Maui in 1994. I left my job with Delta Airlines. I took their first exit package in 1994. I left Atlanta, Georgia, spent a little bit of time in San Francisco and thought about going overseas, almost went to Japan to teach English and ended up meeting my husband on a scuba diving trip here on Maui and thought, wow, has he got geographic desirability. There you go. Among other delightful attributes. <laughs> That's pretty wonderful. And you've been married for? 22 years. That's exciting. Now I know you're a local business owner. I am. Mike I and I run Kihei Ice. I think that's such a wonderful advantage uh, for us to have someone representing us that has that kind of experience. It's so important and uh, uh, South Maui's been going through a lot of growth and changes, right? right? What's important to you? I think what's really important right now as we look at the new uh, affordable housing complexes that are coming online now and the eight development projects that are in the pipeline for South Maui, not including things they want to do way down in Wailea and McKenna, that we talk about and keep infrastructure first on the forefront of everybody's minds as they're making decisions about approving these projects. Now, all of this happens at the County Planning Department, Department of Public Works, but we have our community plan, and we have to hold the decision makers accountable to the community plan. We're already exceeding the ratio of tourists to residents that our community plan dictates. Mm -hmm. We need to finish that north-south collector road, and we need to get the state to make Pi'ilani Highway four lanes from Kilohana to its terminus in Wailea. Mm -hmm. um, without that, we're going to go back to a gridlock situation that is unpleasant for both the people that live here and for the people that are coming to visit, um, people that endure a traffic-laden commute on the mainland don't want to do that when they come on vacation, and we won't attract the best of the tourist demographic if they have to sit in traffic to get to their golf So lane. it's an economic threat as well. It sure is. Um, <clears throat> I guess I can't begin to understand what gets in the way of these projects. We've been talking about the collector road for 20-something years. And what's frustrating is how it gets piecemeal. I don't know if you've uh, traversed the section, Liloa Hema, that connects uh, -E, uh, uh, Kamali'i Alanui and Kionikai. There's a strip in between Kionikai oh, yeah. Road mm -hmm. and the road that the um, elementary Kamali'i school is on. That little strip right there. They came in with the infrastructure, they came in with the paving, they came in with everything. And they start and stop the sidewalks, depending on which parcel has been developed and who has put in their investment into their share of the infrastructure. So, you know, it's just gonna cost more to come back and finish the sidewalk once that corner parcel is developed. And so in the meantime, the residents that use the park there, that try to bike and walk, are forced on and off sidewalks at various intervals. Um, they built the road across two gulches with only 
be little red markers and, you know, occasionally we won't be able to pass. And so um, I'd like to see better planning, not necessarily going with the least expensive option. Um, we probably could have used two bridges on that stretch. And uh, we have to start um, working with instead of against our Malka to Mackay, our waterways, and our gulches. There's one 201 HC project plan right in the gulch. And that you just have to doesn't tell me make what that means. It, um, Oh, the 201H is the um, affordable housing exemptions where they get, uh, because the developer is willing to do so many they get tax short credits, right, they, get, okay, they get exceptions on rules, they get to, mm -hmm. um, and they get permission to build in places where maybe they shouldn't. And so, you know, if, if we're going to put 81 part, I forget which, which uh, how many units that particular parcel has, because like I said, there are eight of them. Um, Where's the water going to go? Yeah. We, we already have a problem with flooding in Phoebe. PA it was largely a wetland and has been paid, paid over. And we really need to think about our wetlands and how we want to manage water that's going to come down. Um, we could do it a smart way, or we can just, you know, allow people to develop what they want, where they want, without making these important considerations. We'll have a better community if we do better planning. If we put infrastructure in place first before the development goes in, um, I think we need to be taking into account how many toilets we're going to want to flush because the Kihei wastewater system, when we were at peak before the pandemic, was already maxed out. And so they're injecting into our waterways, and we all know that residents of Kihei and South Maui want clean air and clean water. It seems a bit overwhelming when you think about it, right? I I do recognize that, especially given what's happening today with the pandemic, that there are so many people that are fearful and they just see what's right in front of them. And so this sort of nearsightedness is going to really hurt us. We need to think about what's coming down the road and anticipate how this is going to change. And, and maybe we don't want to lose an opportunity. You know, we, we have opportunities, the silver lining opportunities in this mm -hmm. dark cloud pandemic, right? We have the chance to reshape our tourism. We have the chance to reshape how we work. We have the chance to reshape um, how our kids learn. And so I know after spending mm -hmm. yesterday at the Kihei Elementary School reading to the kids for the first time nice. under the shade tents that we I arranged for them there. to be installed. There's I a Kihei it. L with the library lady. She is the best. And, um, you know, the kids are really excited to come back to school next year mm -hmm. and be together and be on campus. And I do support that. I, I want to make oh, sure yeah. that we get our vaccination levels up enough so that we can stop the spread of COVID and get our kids back safely to school. That's really important. Good segue. Let's talk about the high school. Good. Shrugging along. And let's talk about the roundabout. Okay. Be slightly because controversial. Slightly, and initially I went, what? But after talking to you and a few people, I decided that I'm for it. Yeah, I think, um, so let's, uh, I want to back up because sure. this, this has been uh, in the works for a really long time. <laughs> the Kihei Community Association and their transportation committee has been working with the Department of Transportation and advocating for this roundabout for a very long time. So people that are just learning about it now and are um, wanting to oppose it, frankly, are coming to the game very, very late. And that's why it's important when you have opinions about what you want to see in your community that you participate with the organizations that are making the decisions about what we're going to do. The roundabout is going to be very good for South Maui. It's going to keep traffic moving, it's going to slow traffic down, and it's going to save lives. I, I kind of like the idea. It almost feels like it's going to be a little bit of a different flavor because it's going to slow down the whole entire highway. But like you said, as we grow and grow, and with the extra traffic from the, the high school, if we don't do something like this, then that stop and go, stop and go, it's going to yeah. take us longer to get it, where we're going. The stop and go does take longer. It does. And I've actually been experimenting, and everybody flipped out when they lowered the speed limit to 30 miles an hour. And 
God knows that I am a speed demon, given the choice. Confession right here. Um, I have to set my cruise control because I got a, I, I stay in the right lane. Auntie and can't drive 55. Okay, <laughs> so I have to st I have to set the the, the uh, cruise control, and I set it for 35 because 30 is really slow. So I set it for 35, and I um, I, um, I live near Kiona Kai, so I get on the highway at Kiona Kai, and I traverse the entire length of Kihei without a single red light going 35 miles an hour mm -hmm. instead of racing at 60 mm -hmm. and sitting two minutes at a light and racing at 60 and sitting at another light for two minutes. It took me about six minutes to get out of Kihei that day. And so, you know, it's all about perspective. I like it. it is about perspective. It is all about perspective. So, mm -hmm. Kihilani Highway is misnamed. It is not a highway. It does not have a median. Um, it was originally a two-lane road with very generous bike lanes you might remember for people that have been here I remember when it was built I used to run up there and, and so when our road became inadequate with all of the development of the resorts down in Wailea instead of you know planning the infrastructure they just did a quick restrike so now we've got a four lane highway without a, without a median where people drive very very fast yes. and we have a lot of fatalities you know we don't want to see our kids um, we have issues right now that we're dealing with the Department of Transportation with children crossing, safe crossing, to get to the high school. And uh, another component of that project that PCA, the Community Association, is advocating for very um, sternly is a pedestrian separated crossing under the gulch. Because that's where they're going to go anyway. That would be great. Yeah. That would be great. The Department of Transportation doesn't want to do it. I know. The community will probably end up, you know, cowboying it anyway, you know, because the kids are going to use that route. They already do. People are already using the gulch. And, it, you know, we don't have record of it running very often. The other one runs, but that gulch runs very rarely and it could easily, easily be closed in the event of a, you know, a, incredible precipitation that would make it untraversable. Mm -hmm. I understand congratulations in order. You have a couple bills before the governor. The, I am waiting very patiently and with uh, bated anticipation for Governor Ige to sign two bills. Um, one is a Senate companion that I worked with Roz Baker on. It's called Lexi's Law and it is named after a young woman who lost her life down in McKenna, driving a rental scooter for which she was unfamiliar. She crossed the center line and was killed by an oncoming utility vehicle. And it was a really tragedy. And her parents really wanted uh, a legacy of life-saving safety for her memory. And so Lexi's Law, and I worked with the Street Bikers United. Those are the those are the motorcycle biker guys, mm -hmm. and they're very active at the legislature because they do not want a helmet law. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. they worked with me to craft a bill that they would be happy to support. And our law mandates a helmet. Anyone re wearing and anybody renting a, a scooter who does not already have a motorcycle license. Okay. So if you have a motorcycle license and you're experienced. You can rent a scooter and not wear a helmet. But Sounds if like you're, compromise. If you're if you're a young person visiting Maui in awe of our vistas and looking around and <laughs> maybe going faster than you should be and you don't have a motorcycle license and you're on a piece of equipment that you're not familiar mm -hmm. with, maybe it's better that you're wearing a helmet. So I'm really thrilled to, and I really need to mahalo Senator Baker because she helped shepherd that through as her companion that made it all the way through the process. So I'm very excited about that one. And another clean energy and um, uh, clean transportation bill that I, my bill that I passed also with the help of uh, Senator Mori Waki. She is the procurement and government reform chair in the Senate and I'm the vice chair in, for the government reform committee in the house. And she really helped me get my bill that will mandate State employees renting vehicles on business to rent an EV before they rent a gas powered vehicle. And what that will do is signal to the rental car companies that they can go ahead and buy a fleet of rental vehicles, of electric vehicles, and they won't just sit there because state employees spend, I think, it, I think the figure was $1.5 million a year on uh, daily rental vehicles. 
for well, how wonderful state that business. you put that together because that's yeah. all you have to do is figure out what's we in it have, for every part got, piece. We have got to electrify our transportation system. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw that uh, the Biden administration ha went all out. President Biden was in Detroit. In the and the F-150 F <laughs> is all EV. I was also, I'm very excited because from what I understand, um, there's a real big push now to um, turn the post office all electric. And you know those those little trucks, yeah. those little trucks, they have a built in new one for like seventy something. And they don't need to go fast. They don't need to go fast and it would just make such a difference. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. I, I think like you said, you know, it's an interesting time right now. For all the negative and the hardship and the heartache and the loneliness, all the things that we've been going through this past year, there's some been some real goodness that's come of it too, because I think that pretty much everyone is really stopped to take a look at their life. Right? For sure. And I think some self examination. Self examination and, and, and reassessing what life is really all about. And and I'm hoping that like you said, we have an opportunity right now to make an about face. Uh, when it was quiet here last year because of COVID, I loved it. We all did. I loved it. I mean it was like it I mean, was when I moved way. here almost yeah. fifty years ago. And, and that was that was really wonderful and fantastic, but I think just like we do independently in our own personal lives, we kind of get on a roll. I think our whole community and our whole world, the whole globe, has just been on this huge roll. And we all got and brought to a quick stop. To a quick stop. So um, I think we need to lock arms. Um, I'm, I'm excited about this interview series, and, and I hope everyone joins me every week because I, I really... I uh, think that it's more important than ever to shop local and to support local. And uh, again, we need to lock our arms and, and work towards our better future. Are you familiar with Maui Food Hub? No. The Maui Hub. Um, my spouse, Mike Weilberger, was just appointed to their board, and he's helping them uh, develop their logistics as, you know, we're in our businesses, manufacturing and distribution, and we've got the distribution route um down. scenario <laughs> dialed yeah. and so Mike is helping out the Maui Hub and they are uh, organizing local farmers to distribute food locally to, to people all over Maui and they're setting up groups to deliver to homes in the south and to homes on the west side. They have been doing this already. They start, uh, autumn nest, the inimitable autumn nest. Yes. and see the sad stuff that had to ride the barge for five days before it got here. 